and I have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. Therefore I will send thee, Moses, unto Pharaoh. Moses said something very famous to God when God came to meet him at that burning bush, to tell him, I want you to bring Israel out of Egypt. I'm giving you this opportunity to lead them. And by the way, I'm speaking to you through a burning bush. And what does Moses say? But Lord, I am not of eloquent speech and I'm slow of tongue, both in the past and now since you've been speaking to me, I, 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 don't, I don't think I can do it. And we can look at that story. Maybe you've even thought to yourself, well, Moses, you, you should have been a bitter at this. I mean, come on, man. Like, but there's also something I want to submit to you about this story that you may not have thought about before in the same way. I want to submit to you that Moses was more humble than many. You see, many people don't have the issue that Moses had. Many people don't say, Oh, God, you know, I'm weak and oh, and, and granted. But then what they would say and think to themselves is, well, I can speak well. I do have wise words and wisdom. I am a prince of Egypt. I can lead them out. Oh, I can do this. Oh, God, yeah, send me. Sure, I'll do this for you. Imagine if that was Moses's attitude. That would have been equally wrong. Perhaps there was something in Moses's humility that was the reason God picked him. But now Moses was not without fault. You see, he had enough humility to recognize, well, you know, I am weak. I have issues. I don't know if I could do it. But Moses's problem was he had unbelief in that God can't do it either. He said he thought to himself, yeah, I can't do it. But he did, could, couldn't go as far as to believe that, well, maybe God could speak through me. And that was his pitfall. And that is a big pitfall that we need to watch out for. But on the other side, there is another type of pitfall, less obvious for some of us. And that is that, well, you can think, well, I can do it. Here I am, God, send me, I'll do it all. Relying on yourself and less reliance on God being there. Relying on your own wisdom. Relying on your good ability to speak well. Oh yeah, Moses, he can't speak well, but I can. Relying on your great leadership skills or whatever else it is that you feel like you can rely on. Ultimately, that is just as much of an issue. And in fact, I want to submit to you, God is even less willing to work with someone like that because they will try and do it alone and they won't even look to God. And even as they fail, they won't sometimes even look to God and they will take credit for themselves when something does go right. But God is seeking the humble and he's calling the humble forward. And he is saying, well, look, I'm calling the humble and up, but I need you to trust me. I need you to believe that I am able to be strong when you are weak. I want to read to you what Paul said, because Paul learned the same lesson. Paul was a little bit different than Moses in that Paul, from what we know, he likely had self-confidence, at least in his life before meeting Christ. He was the one of the leaders in persecuting of the early church. And yet Paul, after coming to Christ and meeting the Holy Spirit, comes to this realization that I need to empty myself, that I can't trust in myself in my wisdom and my abilities. And so he came to the same conclusion that Moses did, that I am weak. Even if you feel like you're strong in relation to what you would need to be doing for God, we are all weak and lacking because we cannot do anything of his mission and callings in our life without his Holy Spirit. And the sooner you realize that, the better, the sooner that you realize you can't just per uh, pretend like you can uh, depend on your own abilities alone, the better, because you will need to realize 
that his power is not optional in your life. You will struggle in life and fail in the callings of God without the power of his spirit working. But the spirit, the Holy Spirit comes as we rely and call and trust in him. And so Paul, he goes and he says, and when I came to you, brothers, I don't come to proclaiming to you the testimony of God of lofty speech or wisdom. I didn't rely on that, but I decided to know nothing among you except Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and fear and trembling. My speech and message was not in plausible words of wisdom, but in the demonstration of the spirit and power. So that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but the power of God. Many of you, you've heard me quote this often, but it's so important. You see, we are now we have explored these two pitfalls that we can suffer as men having unbelief in God's ability like Moses had and that God can work through me or the number two pitfall of believing that your ability is good enough and you don't even need God. Where have you fallen into? Where have you gone? Where is your trust? We it's we need to realize, yes, we are weak. You can be the best public speaker, and that is your weakness, is that you are good at it. That is a big weakness. You know why that's a weakness? Because that, if you're not careful, can cause you to rely on yourself and your own abilities and not and less on God to fill up your speech with his spirit. And if you're a weak person, you know you're weak and for example speaking, well. That's a weakness. You're not good at speaking in front of people. That's a problem. How are you going to speak in front of people if that's what God wants you to do? But if you believe that his abilities and his power is strong enough to overcome any weakness in your flesh, then you are strong in him. Then you are stronger than anyone else. So, brothers and sisters, I want us to really think about this because this is a, something that is so huge, so much bigger than this, just just what happened at the burning bush It's so much bigger than someone who wants to just do public speaking. It's it is when we are studying in our academic institutions, you come out of there and what do you put your trust in? Because you can put your trust in men and your learning abilities and what you've learned and the knowledge you've accumulated and or whatever. And it's fine. But but do you trust in God? How much, where is the, the weight of your trust and reliance? You can, and this, we can even boil this down to the mon- more mundane and simple things of life of, of looking after a family and raising a family. How much do you trust God? You, you think you're a good mom. You think you're a good dad. You've read all the books. You, you got it all figured out. You sure about that? You don't think God's spirit is what needs to really be carrying this thing. Or maybe you feel like, oh, I'm a, I'm a terrible parent. I don't know how to do this. But do you then believe that God's spirit can work through you? Do you rely on him? And ultimately, all of this, what will it do? Ultimately, it's all supposed to be drawing us more close to our father. Because the more that you realize how much you need him, the more you will draw near to him. So, brothers and sisters, ask yourself, where is my reliance? Father, I pray, Lord, that you would help us, Lord, to put our reliances on you and your spirit. Holy Spirit, I pray, Lord, that you would raise up a generation at the sound of my voice who will not be a generation like our forefathers who've just relied on themselves, relied on their institutions, relied on their governments, relied on their brains and wisdom, even though what you have given us is wonderful in these things. Lord, we know that your Holy Spirit must be what carries us, must be where we flow from. And so, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would help us to point our sight, our focus towards you, towards your spirit. God, help us to not be led by our flesh, but to be led by our by your spirit. We pray all this in the name of Yeshua. Brothers and sisters, I hope this has blessed you. Subscribe to this channel for more just like this one. And um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Many blessings and shalom.